Race fans, Fast Eddie here for Inside Northeast Racing, and hell has officially frozen over. Hey Dan, question, can I join the band? Well around here, it is all about fast, Eddie. You know what else this band needs? The voice of the legendary house of power, Mr. Timmy Pitts! Hey Dan, can I join the band? Oh baby baby, that would make the band legendary. Welcome to Inside Northeast Racing, I'm Dan Martin. This week's edition, we'll hear from Cody Higby, Brett Hearn, Matt DiLorenzo, Mad Max McLaughlin, Anthony Perego, Walter Cook, Dan Madigan, Kenny Tremont, Fast Eddie, Jerry Higby, Tim Pitts, Miller Motorsports, Buck Lighthall, Alex Jankowski. What's your favorite track food? Congratulations, Rooftop Shuffler, for your uh, championship at Bethel. Congrats on your championship, Rooftop Shuffler. Congratulations to the Rooftop Shuffler, Joel Mearns. Congratulations to Northeast Racing Video's Facebook superfan, Ed Dockenhausen, for not winning one but two championships this year at the Bethel Motor Speedway. Way to go, Eddie. Hi, my name is Cody Higby. Um, been racing for four years now. Uh, I got a track championship at Middletown last year, so that was really cool. But uh, 2019 was my first year. I ran rookies at Accord, and um, you know that was a really good learning year for me. And from there, we just kind of moved up. We went to uh, Middletown Sportsman and Accord Sportsman the following year, and just kind of been doing that ever since. I'm most excited about running the big block, probably just because of how challenging it is. Um, you know, just getting laps at this point is probably the biggest thing. Um, the more seat time I get, the probably the better off I'll be. Um, so that's probably my most exciting part is just the challenges of it and, you know, running with guys like Anthony and even my dad, running with my dad, that's probably cool. So um, when he gets a win, I'm probably more excited. <laughs> uh, you know, the first time I won a rookie race at Accord, I was like, I can't believe this has happened. Like, what do I do next? And, um, you know, I honestly didn't expect it to come that quick. And, um, you know, when... My dad won Accord a couple weeks ago. I was probably more excited than I was when I went. So I'm uh, really enjoying seeing him coming back and being really competitive this year. And uh, the big block drivers I look forward to racing with is probably Anthony. That's a big one. Um, you know, I grew up with Anthony basically. Uh, he used to work here at Hick Fab. So probably Anthony and Brett, of course. I grew up watching Brett and um, my dad. It's really cool racing with my dad and. Um, you know, just all the locals at Middletown, I grew up watching and now I'm racing with them, that's really cool. You can have as many buddies as you want in the pits, but as soon as you strap in and put the helmet on, you know, you're racing against all of them. So, um, you know, it, it's always uh, fun when you're racing with your buddy, but uh, of course you want to beat them. Some of the best memories I have are just in here working with them in the shop. Um, you know, we have a lot of fun, me and my dad, my grandpa, you know, just working on the cars in the shop, um, that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, sometimes it's more fun doing that and being around them in here than uh, actually at the track. Now down to the pits with a guy named Pitts and another guy some call a goat. Standing by here at the Orange County Speedway with the world's most winningest driver, especially when it comes to dirt motorsports, Brett Hearn. And Brett, you know, we want to touch recently on the announcement that Kenny Tremont, a guy you raced wheel to wheel with for so many years here in the Northeast, kind of hanging up the goggles at the end of this season. And, you know, you raced with him just about the same time period, same era. You're still out here like a 20-year-old on a Saturday night. Well, you can, yes and no. I mean, I'm not doing this on a full-time basis, which is way different. But, you know, there was a, a large group of drivers from the late 70s and early 80s, and we all came up together, and we all stuck around for a really long time. And a lot of us are still doing it, you know, whether it be Jimmy Horton or Alan Johnson, 
uh, you know, all these guys, right? So for 10 years, I've been hearing about how sooner or later, those guys are going to start, you know, saying, hey, I, you know, we've had enough, right? And so you're starting to see that cycle in. And as far as Kenny's concerned, I mean, you know, he's retired and they celebrated his last race. But just like me, you know, if he's physically, if he feels good physically, uh, he may jump in again on some Saturday night. You never know. I would never say never. Yeah, race drivers never really retire. So maybe in the end, the biggest win for you would be the last one ever out of that era to actually say I'm retiring. Yeah, right. Well, you know, like, like I tell people, like, uh, I'm doing this for you know, different reasons now. Um, and as long as I physically feel good and I have good equipment at my fingertips, then the challenge is always fun. Well, I'm certainly hoping there's many more talks to you in Victory Lane before you hang up the goggles. Maybe tonight. <laughs> Hope so. Brad Hearn here at the Orange County Speedway. Talking some knowledge with a guy who knows a little something about a lot of somethings. Hello, uh, Kenny Tremont here, and uh, I've been asked maybe to give a couple tips on, uh, you know, some of the newer drivers, newer people into the sport, kind of what we do during the week. Um, at this point here, uh, it's a Monday night. We just got done running the weekend, and we've got to wash the car yet, so we're in the process of actually uh, taking the car apart, taking the panels off. Uh, getting the panels ready to wash separately. We'll push the car out and we'll wash the chassis and the radiator. Uh, gives me a good uh, chance to look at you know, all the moving parts and see if uh, there's anything that looks kind of different than you know, when we put the car together, if something's bent or something doesn't look just right. So while I'm washing, it gives me a good chance to you know, look things over. Um, and then uh, once we wash the car, we'll push it back in Get it up on jack stands, uh, you know, do our normal maintenance. We have a, a maintenance list that we go through, check nuts and bolts to make sure that they're not loosened up, uh, check wheel bearings to make sure that they're not loosened up, uh, change any fluids, engine oil, brake fluid, power steering fluid. Um, you know, we have a schedule that we like to change those so often, um, especially, you know, after a lot of time where that fluid may get burnt a little bit. So. Uh, you know, that's kind of the normal routine, straighten out any bent parts and pieces, bumpers, uh, panels. You can see that the car's on scales now. We just got done scaling it. I like to scale the car, obviously, before the races, but I also like to scale the car as we come off the speedway. So as soon as I get it unloaded, I don't wash it. I bring it in. I scale it to see what, you know, the chassis is from where I started. So a lot of nights, I think... Uh, you know, I've got so much left for weight, whether it be 50 pounds or 80 pounds, and we run, run the race, and especially if we don't do well, um, you know, we come back, we scale, and we see the after numbers compared to the before numbers. And, you know, sometimes when you make an adjustment, you think that maybe you're putting left for weight in or taking left for weight out, uh, and that's not the case. So I always kind of like to back up my weekend with a, a post-race scale just to, you know, kind of see where you know, if we made a mistake, you know, where we made the mistake, maybe, you know, frame height's high, a frame height's low, the axle's not exactly where it needs to be front to back as far as wheelbase. So many things can happen. Um, so we like to, you know, keep an eye on things, you know, before we take it apart and get ready to wash and, and uh, do our maintenance. Well, looks like Eddie got permission from his wife. He can join the band. Race fans, we're here today with Walter Cook. Walter, looking to put it in the show with your limited sportsman and the regular sportsman. How's it looking today? Uh, I think uh, we, we drew pretty good. We got four, so we should start up front in the heat race. Um, hopefully it uh, goes green to checkers and we can uh, get in a qualified spot. I mean, be nothing better to make this race here. Um, called close a couple years ago, but uh, hopefully a lot better than uh, for, uh, Thursday night went for us. Tell the fans how your season has gone so far this year. Well, we've uh, been racing over at Albany Saratoga Speedway, and uh, we picked up our first win three weeks ago. Uh, it was my first ever. Um, the team, everybody's been working really, really hard. Um, all the marketing partners that have been on board this year have been great. Um, but it's been a, a successful season because uh, you get the win, it's, it's worth it all. And what was that like, winning for the first time? I know how hard you've worked. I know how long you've been involved in this sport. What, explain what it was like crossing the checkered line first. It was, uh, it was crazy. You know, I you know, thought about Danny Odie when, when I uh, crossed it the first time. You know, he was like my racing dad. He brought me up in this sport. And, um, you know, that win was for him. And, you know, I know he was looking down on us uh, that night. Circumstances went well. Um, 
it's it's all it's a lot of luck it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of preparation and you have to have a good group of people around you to to do that and uh i just uh i'm thankful for everything that everybody's been doing because this is a tough sport it's it's not easy and it's easy to get down and you know put it away but you know i think i think this year has been the most successful so far any plans to uh, pursue any other racing here as we hit the end of the season oh uh, yeah we're gonna wrap up at malta massive weekend there are a couple other things in the works maybe charlotte again maybe try some satellite races at dirt week um i just haven't really figured it all out yet i'm here with anthony perego the 2023 big black champion of orange county fair speedway I'd like to look back at your career and how you've progressed over the last 10 years yeah it's been uh pretty crazy you know uh starting out with the sportsman and uh struggling with that and then uh Got pretty good at that, and I uh, got the opportunity to drive the 55 for Gary Mann, and uh, you know it's been uh, sky's the limit from then. And uh, you know now I got uh, Brian Smith and uh, Vinny Salerno with the backing for me, and uh, doing really good. We had pretty, uh, you know, our year's going okay. We could have been better, but uh, to get the big block title at Middletown is always good. You had a pretty heated war going on with the 358 title, and threw everything you had at it. Came up really close to taking that one as well. What's it like with some of these younger drivers out there now that you've become more of the veteran? And uh, how do you see the younger guys coming up? Yeah, there's definitely quite a few of them coming up. You know, uh, that Van Doren kid's pretty good, and there's a couple other ones. But, uh, you know, Dylan was really good with that small block at the end of the year. We kind of had his number there early on, and uh, they figured out something late in the year. But, uh, you know, we hung tough and uh, did what we could for what we got and uh, keep moving on. In my time, in my time, I will roll, to think, roll, roll, we started this back before Jim turned gray. How you doing? I'm Alex Jankowski. I'm 18 years old. I'm the driver of the 84Y Big Block Modified. Um, I've been probably doing modified stuff since 2019. Uh, I ran some sports and stuff in 2018. Uh, I started racing kid carts when I was four. So been racing as long as I can remember, that's for sure. We did slingshots probably started around when I was seven. Uh, and did that till I was about 13, 14. Uh, and then we decided to go sports and racing. You know, I did a lot of road course go kart stuff in the winter time uh, to keep me busy. Um, and that was really awesome. Just a different style of racing, uh, and you learned way different techniques. Out of turn four, the winner, Alex Yang, Cascada Covington Township. Uh, racing in a big car, you know, is definitely a uh, adrenaline rush. You know, it's uh, it's a lot of horsepower. There's a lot of sliding around. You know, especially when it gets slick and there's a cushion and there's grip patches here and there. Um, and racing in a big car is a lot about who you're racing with. You know, you're racing against guys like Billy Decker, Sore Freeze, and Matt Shepard. Uh, the list goes on and on. You know, so um, you know, I definitely love big block modified racing, and it's where my heart is. Some tech talk with the man that keeps the band rolling smoothly. One thing that's changed quite a bit in the last five years has been uh, the shock and the spring packages that we use. Now that we're utilizing a, a four coil car, not so much with the torsion bars in the back, the shock valvings have changed. Essentially, what a shock does is it's a timer. It's a device that changes the timing at which your car does anything that it's gonna do. If your car's gonna roll over like crazy, a shock change isn't going to help that but what a shock change can do is speed that process up or slow that process down um, it's basically made for dampening as your rear end and things are hitting hitting bumps front axles hitting bumps the shocks are produced to smooth those bumps out and to time it so a lot of our valvings and things have changed since we've gone to the left side panner bar and you know shock companies have gotten a lot more intense in, in their valvings you know we choose to use a, a dig brand shock uh, brandon plank and his father dale they've developed this and they're they're day and night developing uh valvings and, and helping a lot of our customers to get their race cars attached to the track much better than they ever have before how do you think these hot dogs will answer this question uh my best food that i ever had at a racetrack was uh like two years ago at malta i saw this thing on the the board it was uh, pizza logs. I never heard of it before, so uh, I gave it a shot. I ate it. It was like the, the best thing I've ever had in my life. I'm John Dumont. I drive 31J a Fonda. I'm gonna say steak on a stick of Lucia is my favorite. Hey, Dave Constantino. Uh, favorite food at the racetrack is probably Howie Burgers, and uh, definitely the cardboard pizza at Lebanon Valley. That's probably my favorite. Hi, my name is Nicholas Santucio, and I'm the driver of the 1D Pro Stock here at Fonda Speedway. I would say my most favorite food I've gotten at a racetrack 
was probably the vinegar fries. That's where I got hooked on them. First time ever at the racetrack. I'm Clayton DeMond, driver of the 314. I'm going to also say Steak on a Stick at Volusia is my favorite. They should have it at Fonda. Hmm. Yes, they should have it at Fonda. My most favorite thing at the racetrack is pizza logs. Back here at the Orange County Fair Speedway, one of the most youngest and winningest drivers ever at the history here at the Orange County Speedway, Tanner Van Doren. Of course, he had two impressive small uh, sportsman uh, Eastern States wins. Back now with a big block and a small block here for the final night in the 2023 campaign for points. Tanner, we just got a chance to talk to Brett Hearn. Been racing out here for decades, okay? You come out here, you're 15, he's, uh, let's just say mid-60s, okay? Any intimidation at all when you get up alongside of a driver that you know, like Hearn, Urich, Hetzler, Horton, all those guys, it's like, ooh, I better behave myself when I get up next to these guys. Yeah, um, I just try to erase them with respect and uh, do the best I can and try to beat them. Um, you know, they might have a, a ton of history, which is awesome. But, uh, you know, my goal is to go out there and win as many features as I can and uh, to finish as best as I can. Um, you know, it definitely uh, makes you feel good when you, you know, get out of the car and you beat them guys where Brett and them guys could drive around here with their eyes closed. And, you know, this is only my third year in a modified. So uh, it just it makes you feel good, I guess. So respect is certainly the name of the game. You try and, and when you're in your race car, you're just as big as they are. And, and really, it's, a, it's an equalizing factor, is it not? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, you still got to race them with respect so you, so you don't end up tear, tore up. But uh, it, we're all the same size and out there you're racing as hard as, uh, as everybody else. It's whoever gets the best on setup that night at that speedway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it, it's so hard these days. Uh, everybody got the same stuff. So we're, we're all just trying to find that half a tenth and uh, no, just super hard. Now, final night for track points here at Orange County. Got your big block and small block ready to go. Fighting your way up through the, uh, the points chase to at least land a solid top 10, maybe big blocks. And you're already in that uh, position right now for small blocks. Yeah, we've had a rough year, but uh, you know, we're not going to give up and keep going. That's the spirit, young man. Good to see you here at the Orange County Speedway. Tanner Van Doren. Oh, buck me, this ought to be good. We're here with Danny Barron, driving the 16X car tonight. What do you think of tonight's outcome? You ready to put the wheel to the front? Uh, we're gonna try tonight. Obviously, uh, you know, different car, different motor package tonight. So, uh, you know, a lot of learning curves. I, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we can put it towards the front and uh, make everybody happy, so. That's awesome, very awesome. What do you think about tonight running against your dad with a different car than you're usually running against him with? Uh, you know, same old, same old. Obviously, we'll try to beat him, but, uh, you know, he's getting faster and, and learning the left side stuff. So, um, you know, I'm just hoping that we can, you know, put a, put a good run together tonight and see what we have for the rest of the weekend. Uh, you know, today's just like a test and tune to get us ready for uh, the big day on Saturday. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be taking, taking home some cash. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good luck tonight, Danny, on, on uh, the race tonight and this weekend. Sounds good. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, buddy. Let's see what's going on after dark at Miller Motorsports. So what he's doing now is uh, we measured the car on the scales, and with the car sitting at static loading, it was 21 inches. Uh, so the black indicator on the left, he's going to step it. He's compressing the, the coil spring with the shock to exactly 21 inches, which is then going to give the static loading. That's the car sitting on the ground, not in the corner. See, so what he's doing now is he's adjusting the, uh, the there's his collar and he's adjusting the height of it. He went out, which means he's going to make the spring itself ride higher on the on the coil on the shock. So now he's compressing to 21 inches. And that's going to give him a static load. Yeah, so what he's doing now is he's compressing the spring further. So if the car is in the middle of the corner and the car is all the way over, so at this point he's compressed the spring three and a half inches. So then he gets a reading of how much weight is actually being transferred uh, to that corner of the car and thusly because the car operates on an X then he's going to be taking weight uh, from the left front and uh, the left rear. Well, it's a long, long Hi, I'm Dan Madigan. 
I race in the street stock division here at Malta Speedway and we make a, uh, an occasional run out to Glen Ridge on a Sunday. Uh, I'm having a great time out here. Unfortunately, I missed a big part of the season with a fractured vertebrae. Had to get over that, but these guys run hard, make no mistake. If they had the big tires, I think they could run with any pro stock. Here tonight, my niece Ashley, big Kevin Harvick, Stuart Friesen fan. She's actually driven her car on Martinsville and Bristol Speedway. I'm Ashley, Dan Madigan's niece and crew member of the 24 car. Um, he mentioned me putting my car on Martinsville and Bristol. That was last year during the Track Laps for Charity event. It's a lot of fun and for a donation I recommend everybody do it. Uh, we got the dog Lacey. My son would love to be here but he lives in Boston. My brother Jeff helped build this car back in the 2000s because I couldn't afford a can of Zero. And by golly, it's going good right now. Very proud. Hi, Kenny Gates, driver of the number 35 Pro Stock. I've been racing for right around 30 years now, so we've been at it a long time. Uh, still love it, still love the competition, still love being out there competing every week. It's, uh, you know, it's really what I, what I love to do. Uh, tonight's the Hondo Classic, so we're down here with two cars. My brother's going to drive my, uh, my backup car. Um, so we're having a good time. Oh, let's just make it exciting. Let Gates pass me on the restart. I'll get the lead back. Hondo retakes the lead as they go between turns three and four. Carpenter on the inside this time. Gates on the top of it. Carpenter retakes the lead. Hondo goes to the front as they go to turn number one halfway. Drifting off the turn, Carpenter in front, one turn and a little bit to go. And Hondo is going to get the win. Carpenter got there. Gates is second. Stone is third. I tell you, it's a lot different than it was back in the day. Um, just the cars have gotten much more professional. We've got coil cars and leaf cars out there. The new coil car suspensions are very good, very good uh, as far as how they handle and things like that. So. We've gone to one of those this year after probably 29 years of running a, a leaf sprung car. So that's been a new thing and uh, we're doing pretty well with it. Uh, we're running uh, both uh, Utica Rome for the Thunder on the Thruway. We're running here every, every week at Fonda and we've, uh, we've made three trips to Brookfield Speedway too. And we're hoping to close out on a strong note here tonight and try to pick up our fourth uh, Hondo Classic win. Flags in the air, your Hondo Classic winner, Kenny Gates. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another edition of Inside Northeast Racing. Join us again for the next chapter coming real soon. There are stars in the southern sky. And if ever you decide you should go. Time sweet as honey down the seven bridges road.